Hello my friends, welcome to Legacy of the Taldorim. This is a custom campaign made by the community member Enoki, and I am really, really looking forward to this one. This is not actually a finished campaign, and usually I have a rule where I wait for campaigns to be finished before I play them. However, it's my week off, and I'm going to do whatever I want. So we're going to play a little bit of Legacy of the Taldorim. I've heard good things about it. I have heard that it is not just like putting the co-op or Alarak into it, but a good imagination of how the Taldrim could work in a Legacy of the Void setting in a balanced way. So I'm really, really excited about it. Let's start. A great evil looms over the galaxy. The dark god Amon has returned, spurred on by Zeratul's prophecies. Kerrigan and her swarm set out to destroy Amon's hybrid, hoping to stop the coming oblivion. With the threat of the Zerg Queen absent, the Protoss Hierarch Artanis raised a massive invasion fleet, left the Dark Templar world of Shakuras, and gave it to Alarak, who committed to restore his people's former glory by reclaiming the lost homeworld of Ire. Alarak intends not er, Alarak intends to not return it, and Zeratul has a misleading feeling about him. <laughs> I love it. All right, let's give this a go. Obviously, we're going to jump on to Brutal Difficulty, and let's see how it works. Get him, Janara. Nice. She can't do much, but the things that she does do are very, very useful. And yes, we are going to go with the canonical, every single Taldorim mothership is Janara, especially when they die. The Taldorim are taking the objective. Alright, so what do we got? We have the Adjudicator, slain faction. Powerful melee warrior can use impede and shield capacitor. Uh, supplicants and Adjudicators are the first units to be sacrificed, so it still has a sacrifice ability. It looks like these are just supplicants from co-op. These restore 100 shields with an autocast. Uh... Increases Judicator's movement speed, so this is charge. And then we have some Immortals, the Resistor. Increases attack speed by 5% every time the Resistor attack. Whoa. Huh. So it doesn't do much damage, but it gets faster as it continues to attack. And then it takes 10 damage per attack while the shield is active. This is a very good unit. And it hits air. What? Oh, this is amazing. Then we have the Slayer has blink and next attack deals double damage so this is the co-op slayer and then it has the havoc which gives plus two range and a force field okay so for the most part this is the same but the overpowered vanguard has been replaced with a i think more generic but or more generically useful Whew. all right this mission might not be that hard oh wrath walkers nice I think that replacing the Overpowered Vanguard is a good idea because it's just very hard to balance that unit because it shoots so many times that upgrades either scale way too much or not enough. The Wrathwalker actually feels better here. I think that it has a better firing rate. Oh, look at that! Okay. This is a smart change. So usually what the Wrathwalker does is it has to charge up. Well, it gets into range, it looks at a thing, charges up, and then fires. But this one charges up, and then when it finds a target, it fires. So it's pre-charged for the first shot. That is a really nice change for the Wrathwalker. Nice! I'm already impressed. That is a very intelligent way to make this unit feel better. It still does... Ooh, it does bonus versus massive, and then it still does the insane damage versus structures as well, so it's a good siege unit. But it has that burst volley. Oh, this is cool. This is very smart. Looks like Alarak still has the charge. He has the Alarak heals 20 life and shields per unit supply that kills. And then a wave that deals 50 damage plus zero versus air. Um, all right. I'm really excited to do plus zero versus air, but whatever. Most of this army seems fairly a move, but that's kind of how this mission works most of the time, right? So that is fine with me. Oh, what is that? There was something coming down from the heavens. Spear of a dooning, my opponent. But I'm not entirely sure what it was. Oh, Destruction Wave is on autocast, huh? I think I want to have it off of autocast so that I can use it manually and then use it worse. 
The powdery lay claim to this area. So good. I like the I like the design so far. It feels very tall to rim, but a little bit more Yeah, it's just not super generic. That's a lot of swarm hosts. So there's definitely increased difficulty of enemies here because that is not normal. It's usually just a couple roaches and hydras. I'm going to say that I bet I bet the melee guys are not going to be the <coughs> <laughs> oh, whoa, his HP went up. Alrax steals life from enemy units you control to heal himself when he is near death, increasing the main ability's cooldown by half a second. No cooldown. Each absorption missile now increases Alrax's maximum vitals as opposed to restoring. Oh, that's interesting. So basically, when he kills a bunch of small things... He gets a very temporary, enormous durability boost instead of just being restored. That's very powerful. So I think I want to be microing my stalkers here. I want to figure out what that blast from the sky is. Because it seems to... Oh, Hunter Banes. Oh, big hits right there. And those are Creeper Hosts. Dropping the Baneling Boys. So we got to target these down. See if we can move on over. Alarak is doing well. And all those are dead. Not too bad. Not too bad. This feels good to play. I'm just going to say this right now. A lot of custom factions feel pretty jank. But this one still feels like Protoss for the most part. And it's very smooth. Alarak doesn't feel like he's getting himself killed in any dumb way. Which is phenomenal. Let's see. We have Psionic Orb, Mind Blast, and Sacrifice. Sacrifice the sense and sacrifice is auto cast. Interesting. So he'll kill his own supplicants that way, but I guess that's fine. Because we can just drop a couple of these orbs to start weakening the enemies for a bit. Fire a knockback, and this area has been cleared. Nice. So I think there is a world where these stalkers, the slayers, are really, really good. Reason that I think that is the double damage on Blink. It just sounds awesome to me. As someone who likes playing with Blink Stalkers, the ability to basically double your force or retreat and have a bunch of durability increase sounds great. I think for this next part, what was that? Hey, Provius, how you doing, bud? Oh, it's good to see you too. Where the Taldorim? I have an idea. Oh, the Havoc are detectors. Interesting. I didn't even think about that. So I'm leaving Alarak back. Actually, he has a giant death wave that kills Zerglings, huh? My thought was I was going to pull the Lings up and then use Psionic Orbs, but I guess that all small units are kind of invalid in this run. Is that Tarosk? Oh! Get out of there, bud. Uh, we can blast that. There are Broodlords. There's usually not Broodlords in Legacy of the Void. They were removed in place of Guardians. Probably because Blizzard thinks that they're OP and doesn't like them in their campaigns anymore. Because they're not Nova Covert Ops either. Ooh, Burrow Charge. However, the Burrow Charge Ultras are actually visible while they're underground. That's a cool change. I like that. It means you can keep doing damage to it instead of it being invulnerable during the charge. Very neat. It seems like Anoki has put a lot of thought into these things, and I really, really appreciate that. I'm already quite impressed with what's going on here. Okay, get the Wrathwalkers in the back, and we are heading towards that final, final stretch. My Havocs are very damaged. I need to make sure they stay alive, because A, they're my detection. Oh, did you see that? One sec. What's that? Oh, huh, you get a little wireframe for targeting your blink. But you don't get a radius indicator. I feel like having the uh, distance would be more important if I had to make a choice there. Of course, both would be really cool. Let's uh, fire a couple of these orbs, and then... Oh, they didn't fire the orbs, did they? All right, the orb might be really bad. It just doesn't do a whole lot of damage. I'm going to try to focus on using Mind Blast then, because I know that Mind Blast is pretty good. Getting used to microing this army, there's a lot of different... It feels very high skill potential. 
because I can micro Alarak, I can micro the Stalkers, I can micro the Ascendants, and in theory I could be Force Fielding as well. That is a lot of different things that I could be doing. I don't know if it's too many things, but I do like the fact that there is potential for control here. Ooh, a Lunky, huh. Alright. Let's try to move forward and Lurker's down. We can melt the Ultra. Hey, Alarax from Slain. Okay. A little bit of a knockback right here, and then... Careful, Alarak, careful. <laughs> it's very, very iffy. I don't want him to die. We can blink under the Broodlord. And this next Broodlord. And then we can pull back with the Stalkers. And during the next one, we can melt that with one of those Ascendant Mind Blasts, and we are doing just fine. I'm going to put this final Havoc on follow mode instead of being as part of the army because I'm very afraid for his life. Especially because he is my detector. Which means that those lurkers and stuff, if there are more, that could get pretty suspect. I think I would just lose. Or I'd have to sit on top of them spamming Alarak's ability. Something like that. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be pretty. For this final push, we're going to get the... Supplicants in the front, Zealots in the front, everything else in the back, and start pushing in. We're going to do a big blink on top of that, and the double damage allows me to snipe it really nicely. I'm going to kite them back a little bit as the orbs get their damage done. And then we can walk forward and get the snipe off. I like this. I really do. I actually think that this army has more synergy than the... Uh, traditional Legacy of the Void army that they give you, which is pretty funny. Mind Blast is great. Oh, no! Um, Alarak has died. He'll be available for combat as Beacon at the last warp in location in 15 seconds. <gasps> oh, that... That is so nice. Oh my goodness. I'm in love. Thank you. It didn't it didn't game over me. Oh, I am so happy right now. Inoki, you are a legend. Wonderful. I'm so I'm really pleased. Nice. It's just I don't even care about you, Alarak. It's fine. Okay, we're gonna blink back a little bit. Easy peasy. I assume you lose if your entire army is dead and Alarak dies, but that was... Expect nothing less of the Perhaps now we can move on to a real fight. For a version of For Ire, which is supposed to be an A-move mission, I was really impressed. I thought that was a very, very fun mission. All right, guys, that is going to be the end of episode one of Legacy of the Tall Rim. If you guys are interested in it, please tell me in the comments because I'm not entirely sure if people are like super stoked about this idea or not, but I would love to get a little bit of feedback for it. Should I continue playing it through? I believe that about two thirds to three quarters of the campaign is done. I think that there's like maybe six more missions or something like that that have not been finished. So we would be going into it knowing that there is not going to be a conducive conclusion. So keep that in mind, but I would love to hear your thoughts. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed playing it, and I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day. Peace.